Greetings this Lord's Day from the Sanctuary of St. Matthew's Church in Glendale, California, as we gather on the 11th Sunday in Pentecost for our virtual worship service. Welcome to you wherever you might be. Let us pray. Ruler of the universe, so many times we have failed to remember that we are members of and heirs to your kingdom. Instead, we have acted as though we live in our own little kingdoms and have focused on our own little worlds. Forgive us and help us to reach out and share with a hurting world the love that we receive by being your subjects. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Today, the prophet Amos calls for justice to roll down like waters. Paul urges us to encourage one another with the promised coming of the Lord Jesus. And Jesus himself tells us the parable of the wise and foolish bridesmaids. Surrounded by the faithful of every time and every place, we celebrate Jesus' return in our midst in the word of life and in the feast of victory, which is a foretaste of the marriage feast of the Lamb. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Sisters and brothers, bear with one another in love. Maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. And take no part in the unfruitful works of darkness, but instead expose them. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Holy and gracious God, we confess that we have not led a life worthy of the calling to which we have been called. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We have not acted according to your will. We have grieved your Holy Spirit. Have mercy on us. Forgive us according to the riches of your grace. Make us holy and blameless before you in love so that we may live to the praise of your glory. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for you, and for Jesus' sake, God forgives you all your sins. You who were once far off have been brought near by the blood of Jesus. Amen. The peace of Jesus be with you always, and also with you.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. Let us pray. O God of justice and love, you illumine our way through life with the words of Jesus. Give us the light we need, and awaken us to the needs of others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The Book of Psalms Psalm 70 To the chief musician, a psalm of David, to bring to remembrance. Make haste, O God, to deliver me. Make haste to help me, O Lord. Let them be ashamed and confounded that seek after my soul. Let them be turned backward and put to confusion that desire my hurt. Let them be turned back for a reward of their shame that say, Aha! Aha! Let all those that seek thee rejoice and be glad in thee. And let such as love thy salvation say continually, Let God be magnified. But I am poor and needy. Make haste unto me, O God. Thou art my help and my deliverer, O Lord. Make no tarrying. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. We do not want you to be unaware, brothers and sisters, about those who have fallen asleep, so that you may not grieve like the rest who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose, so too will God, through Jesus, bring with him those who have fallen asleep. Indeed, we tell you this on the word of the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will surely not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself, with the word of command, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God, will come down from heaven, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. Thus we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore console one another with these words. The Word of the Lord. Come with us, love the Lord, and let our joys be Lord. Join in a song with sweet accord. Join in a song with sweet accord. And the Beautiful, beautiful Zion, we marching upwards to Zion, John, the beautiful city of God. The sorrows of the mind be banished from the
then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. And five of them were wise, and five were foolish. They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them, but the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go ye out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. But the wise answered, saying, Not so, lest there be not enough for us and you. But go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came. And they that were ready went in with him to the marriage, and the door was shut. Afterward came also the other virgin, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. Watch therefore, for ye know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. With Cinderella. Disney once again returned to true full-length animated features. Cinderella, which is based on a story told by Charles Perrault some 300 years before. Cinderella is a young girl whose wealthy widow widower father remarries so that Cinderella might once again have a mother. Unfortunately, when the father dies, new stepmother Lady Tremaine shows her true colors. Lady Tremaine makes Cinderella her slave, her slave as well as the slave of her cruel stepsisters Anastasia and Drizella. Cinderella's only friends are some mice, some birds, a horse named Major, and a dog named Bruno, all of whom seem to be victims of an ill-tempered cat an ill-tempered cat named Lucifer, who delights in making them all miserable. Soon we meet the king. The king is worried that his only son is still single. Thus the king decides to throw a grand ball, a grand ball designed to be something like ABC's The Bachelor. News of the ball soon reaches Cinderella's home. Cinderella, begging to attend, is given two impossible pre prerequisites by Lady Tremaine. Cinderella may only attend if she has something presentable to wear and if she gets all her work done, work which is then greatly increased by Lady Tremaine and the cruel stepsisters. Just when Cinderella has given up all hope of attending the ball, her animal friends come to the rescue. Using rags discarded by the stepsisters, the animals proceed to create a gown. However, once it is time to go, the stepsisters recognize their old scraps and they tear Cinderella's gown to pieces. Now, truly broken-hearted, Cinderella breaks down in tears. Tears which somehow attract the attention of a fairy godmother, a fairy godmother who magically gives Cinderella a coach, a gown, and a pair of glass slippers. These gifts do come with one stipulation, though. All this newfound grandeur will come to an end when the clock strikes midnight. In our reading today from Matthew, Jesus tells a story about a group of young women grandly dressed at midnight. In Jesus' story, a group of bridesmaids were sent, as was the custom back then, to fetch the bridegroom and escort him to the bride. In first century Palestine, Weddings were normally celebrated at night. Thus, bridesmaids had to carry oil lamps for light. 
Unfortunately, in Jesus' story, the groom is delayed, leaving the bridesmaids to nod off. But then suddenly, the clock strikes 12, and it is announced, look, here is the bridegroom. Come out to meet him. You know, life is filled with the unexpected. Life is filled with the unexpected. Fate, as they say, is fickle. You and I can never know what will happen the next time the clock strikes 12. Truly life-altering moments can come at any hour. A new parent once waited anxiously in the maternity waiting room. When the nurse finally appeared, the parent asked, Tell me, is it a boy? Well, the one in the middle is. Yes, life is filled with the unexpected. In the first century, Greco-Roman philosophy taught that life is always moving in cycles, always repeating itself. Because of this, it was believed that life is really never going anywhere. Life is just turning round and around again and again. It was just this sort of pessimistic view of life which got behind astrology, horoscopes, and other foolish superstitions. Studying the movement of the stars, hoping to predict the movement of life, ultimately views humans as mere pawns in a predetermined game of chess, a game of chess with no real hope of winning. Jesus, however, rejected that first-century first hopeless view of life. In Jesus' teachings, life is not some treadmill of cycles on predetermined tracks. Rather, in Jesus' teaching, life is an adventure, moving ever into new frontiers and ultimately into the greatest adventure of all. A certain man in Australia was a student of world affairs. In the late 1930s, the man concluded that a second world war was inevitable. Hoping to flee the coming carnage, the man moved to the most isolated island he could get to, an island named Guadalcanal. No, we can never escape the unexpected. When the clock strikes midnight, anything can happen. So back to our story. Thanks to her fairy godmother, Cinderella has made it to the ball where she has captured the prince's heart. The king is pleased. But then the clock begins to strike 12. Cinderella tears away from the prince to rush home. However, the prince chases after Cinderella, retrieving only a glass slipper that she has dropped on the staircase. As the twelfth toll sounds, Cinderella finds herself once again dressed in rags with but one remnant of her fa fairy tale night. Cinderella has the other glass slipper. The king is frantic. Thus, the king orders his grand duke to search for the fair maiden whose foot will match the glass slipper. Suspecting that the slipper just might belong to Cinderella, Lady Tremaine hastily locks Cinderella up in the attic. Themselves now hoping to land the prince, the cruel stepsisters try their best to cram their feet into the glass slipper when the Grand Duke arrives. But like trying to put a glove on another glove, it will not fit. In Jesus' story today, something similar happens. The grand announcement is made that the bridegroom is finally approaching. The bridesmaids all jump to their feet and ready their lamps. Unfortunately, half of them are unable to get their lamps to burn. They are unable to get their lamps to burn because that half has failed to bring enough oil. 
They try to beg, they try to borrow, they run out to buy, but to no avail. And when they return, they find that the door has been shut. There simply are some things in life that cannot be borrowed or bought. There are crucial moments in life when we cannot turn to someone else and try to claim what is theirs. We cannot fit into a slipper that belongs only to Cinderella. We cannot use the oil that belongs to another. There's an old legend about a king who was very unhappy. So the king summoned his sages for advice, and the sages told the king to find the happiest person in the kingdom and then wear that person's shirt for a while. Yet after a huge search, when the king found the happiest person in the kingdom, the king found that the person was so poor that he did not own a shirt. Yes, we may be able to borrow someone's tools or other things, but we can never truly borrow that which is deep inside them. So then, Cinderella's cruel stepsisters contort their feet in vain while Cinderella is locked up in the attic, unable to prove that the slipper really belongs to her. But then, two daring mice manage to wrest the key to the attic from Lady Tremaine's pocket. Lucifer tries to intervene and prolong Cinderella's captivity, but Bruno the dog dispatches Lucifer with haste. Then, just as the Grand Duke is about to give up, Cinderella rushes in to try on the slipper. However, as the Duke's assistant approaches Cinderella, Lady Tremaine trips the assistant, leaving the glass slipper to smash to the ground in a thousand pieces. Evil and hatred, it seems, have won the day. It seems. Until Cinderella calmly pulls out the matching slipper and shows that it fits her perfectly. The story ends happily ever after with a royal wedding at 12 noon. Jesus' story today also ends with a royal wedding. A royal wedding, a royal banquet to which all of the faithful of God's kingdom are invited. A royal banquet which shall never end. Truly, for those who have prepared for the return of the bridegroom, Jesus' true story has a happily ever after ending that cannot be beat. Those who have prepared for the return of the bridegroom, those who, even in the face of this world's evil and hatred, refuse to give up faith. Those, in a sense, like Cinderella, who, as the narrator tells us, through it all, remained ever gentle and kind. For with each dawn, she found new hope that someday her dreams of happiness would come true. Those who, through it all, have prepared for the return of the bridegroom with hope. Devotional author Max Licato tells a story about one of his friends who took a vacation to Disney World and there had a very special experience inside Cinderella's castle. A beautiful young actress was that day playing the part of Cinderella. All of the little children pressed as close to her as they could, their little eyes filled with fascination. But then, out of the corner of her eye, Cinderella caught sight of an abnormally small boy standing off in one corner. 
A small boy born with a tragically deformed face. A small boy who gripped tightly to his older brother's hand. A small boy who watched as Cinderella lavished her attention on all of the other children. But then, politely but firmly, Cinderella began to make her way through the crowd of little ones over toward the corner. Finally reaching the corner, Cinderella got down on one knee, smiled a huge smile, and gave the small boy a loving kiss on the cheek. People of God, Jesus made his way to this earth so that he could find you and me and everyone tucked away in our corners. Jesus made his way to this earth, not merely as a prince, but as the king of kings. Jesus made his way to this earth to show us that no matter how tragically deformed we might be by Lucifer's tricks or by our own brokenness and wrongdoing, he loves us all the same. He loves us. He forgives us. He washes us. He nourishes us. And he bids us to dine forever at the bridegroom's eternal feast. Amen. With the whole people of God in Christ Jesus, let us pray for the church, those in need, and all of God's creation. God of truth, grant to your church the gift of speaking truth to power, 
love to hate, hope to despair. God of mercy, receive our prayer. Creator God, you made the world full of glory and mystery, full of creatures beyond number and name. Make us careful stewards of the beauty and diversity of your creation. God of mercy, receive our prayer. Gracious God, we give you thanks for prophets like John the Baptizer, who call us to be disciples of Jesus, who remind us to live in mercy with justice. God of mercy, receive our prayer. God of all mercy, strengthen the baptized in this and all congregations and throughout the world. Help us to live secure in the promise of life with you. God of mercy, receive our prayer. God of healing, we pray for all who are sick, those who are homebound, and those with special needs. Comfort them with your presence and promise. God of mercy, receive our prayer. God of every time and place, we give you thanks for those witnesses in our lives who point us to you. May their example fill your church with unending hope. God of mercy, receive our prayer. Loving God, you are near to us when we cry out to you. Into your embrace, we commend all for whom we pray in the name of Jesus who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We give you thanks, almighty God, that you refresh us as we come together. In your mercy, strengthen us through your gifts in faith toward you and in love toward one another. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Holy, eternal majesty, holy, incarnate word, holy, abiding spirit, one God, bless you, now and forever. Amen.